Okay, happy. Well, it's almost over. January 9th. Um, I just came home from the artist meetup. Um, I cut my hair today. I was having a hair crisis last night. <laughs> and this morning I just decided to shave it. Um, yeah, so I just got home. It's almost 9 p.m. already. But I'm hungry. I need to eat something and maybe try to work on the witch door pages and but I try to go to bed early uh, because it's um, a critical role morning again tomorrow so I need to wake up early I got some dice today from Gra Kraken dice Kraken 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 dice um, but yeah, I will try to show them tomorrow um, with some daylight. And yeah, that's it for now. Okay, hello. It's Saturday, the 11th of January. It's almost half past two. Um, I spent yesterday uh, cleaning up my apartment and then making the witch door pages. So, didn't get to show my new dice, but today, now I have some time, so I thought I would do that before we run out of daylight. So uh, this is my my dice bag. <laughs> it's get, starting to get, get full. This is by Haridras. I think I got it at uh, Thought Bubble in 2018. It's pretty neat, but yeah, I might. <laughs> Need a bigger one if I can't control myself with buying new dice. Um, so yeah, uh, I ordered new dice from uh, how do you say it? Kraken, Kraken dice, uh, and I got them recently. So let me show you what I got. This is the Abus set, I think it's called. Um, these are for my my night cleric Nox that I play. We play the humble wood setting. So this fits him pretty well. <laughs> there. Dark and dark and cool. He's he's like so so goth and well not not really but like angsty emo kid something like that. This is the sky bridal 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 set. I just got them because they they are so pretty. They have a little bit of purple in them as well. Don't know if, if it will show that well on camera. And some sparkle. Uh, I thought it would, they were cute, so I got them. <laughs> so yeah, 
and they had this offer that if you order if the order is x amount you get a random a small die set so I, I bought some stickers as well so I got the order um, over the that amount so I got this green small dice as well and then the stickers I ordered two stickers this cyan and the pink one but I got some extra stickers as well I got the gold one and the lilac and then I got the the logo or the the thing to so that's my Kraken Kraken <laughs> order. I would actually I could actually uh, show you my other dice as well now that we are on it. So these are my first die dice die dice that I got for playing uh, Shadowrun. And I also got these again because they are so pretty. Uh, then I have my dice from Ropecon that I bought last summer. In Helsinki, then I have another Kraken, Kraken <laughs> die set. We that we got with my friend from the the Kickstarter. These were the the unicorn dice. I I think they're so pretty. Super cute. <laughs> so yeah, that's my that's my dice collection so far. Um, yeah, I I will try to like keep <laughs> keep it relatively small because I don't really. I'm quite new to playing role play uh, like tabletop things uh, and our. Uh, first like a shadow run and the D, D campaigns discontinued so now I'm just playing the Humblewood uh, campaign with my friends so yeah this is <laughs> like a lot for that but yeah I don't know and I also wanted to show you what I got these arrived while I was in Lapland I ordered uh, this patch and a sticker um, this this is going to go to my my denim jacket, but I I think I'll just attach it later after, before I start using using it again. But yeah, this is so me. <laughs> I'm so tired all the time. So there's a sticker as well, and then I got this extra sticker. So cute, and these are from from M Illustration. Manuela Lopez. This was so cute. <laughs> so thank you, Manuela. Yeah, I can't wait to put these to use. But that's all for now. Uh, I will. I thought I would do some comic, uh, other comic stuff today. But it's already like two thirty. So <laughs> uh, I'm so late with everything. I'm so tired. I the witch top pages took so so much time yesterday. So uh, I got to bed really late. But. 
I will try to get something done today. Yeah, and tomorrow is uh, Transfusions Sunday again. I will continue with the new chapter. So that's, but that's for tomorrow. So yeah, I'll see you in the next clip. Bye. Yeah. It's the 20, 20th of January. I just got home from a movie. We went to see the portrait of the lady on fire with my friend. And I really liked it. It was really beautiful. It had some nice ASMR <laughs> um, in it. The actresses were really beautiful. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, hmm. I was left kind of speechless afterwards. Um, I don't know, like your own life feels kind of mundane after <laughs> after a movie like that yeah I, I don't know it feels a bit a bit sad <laughs> but yeah and before that I, I went to a cafe to uh, sketch this week's witch door pages with my iPad and yeah, I haven't been to the that cafe in a, in a while, so it was nice to to be there for for a couple of hours before the movie. And mm, yesterday was Sunday, and Sunday is a transfusions day for me. I usually uh, sketch next week's pages for my patrons, and then do a live stream and do the the, that Sunday's pages uh, on the live stream, but I talked a little bit about it, well, kind of quite a lot about this on Twitter already, but um, uh, I've been feeling like um, quitting the live stream part of it. My live streams have been quite dead um, for for a few months now so uh, it it makes me kind of feel like or kind of question why why I am still doing it of course there are a few people who come there each each uh, Sunday and it's I'm really grateful that for that but um, it still takes some effort and like you have to be uh, in a certain like mind mindset zone like 
I don't know, um, whenever you are streaming. So it's a bit stressful. It used to be fun, but now it's kind of not fun anymore. <laughs> I started doing the live streams years ago. Um, a lot of people showed up there usually and we had fun and we talked, chatted about everything together and I got to know my readers better and you don't really get to know the readers um, that well only through comments or yeah comments because they just uh, comment on your art or comics or stuff like that but in the live stream chat I get to just get to know them better and it feels like like there are actually real people uh, there on the other side of the internet <sighs> if you know what I mean um, so yeah, but nowadays there just isn't really that many people there chatting, so it's kind of, it's a bit lonely to be online or, or, or no, alive, live in the live stream just by myself um, most of the time for hours. So, yeah, I thought I would just quit it. Or maybe just have like a break and do a live stream if I, again, if I feel like it after a while. Um, I've been thinking of uh, uh, setting a Discord for, for the readers of my comics, but yeah, I still need to figure out um, some stuff regarding that. Maybe I like find somebody who would like to moderate it and yeah, I don't know. Because I still want to connect with people, um, but often I don't have have time or just talking one-on-one -on -one messaging with somebody um, it feels kind of awkward so like a bigger chat would be I would I don't know it would be it would be better for me because I'll, I'll also with the bigger chat with more people there, I don't feel like I have to be constantly answering everyone and talking and reacting for e everything. So, yeah. So that's that's my thoughts on live stream. And I uh, I got some like comments from other people who have been live streaming before and having the same same um, issue with people just disappearing and not coming to their live streams anymore and so maybe it's just um, like a bigger thing I do understand like pe some people don't want to be spoiled so they don't come to uh, comics live streams but that's not really the issue here because there have there has been people there before who don't mind uh, being spoiled, so it's not really this isn't like directed at people who who haven't been to the live stream ever. Yeah, and I don't want to blame anyone because uh, people people change and their life change and they either lose interest or they don't have time or or whatever and that's fine I don't I can't really like tell people what to do and I don't want to tell people what to do so 
yeah I don't it's just I don't know it's just life it's just whatever uh, it's not anyone's fault just something that is happening and I kind of feel bad about it but I can't do anything about it so yeah I don't I don't I don't know <laughs> I can't help it it's okay so but I decided not to live stream anymore so that's one less thing to stress about every Sunday because I spend m most of the Sundays just doing the comic stuff so it's always a little bit stressful to start a live stream um, as it's it's also fun or was fun before I, I knew I, I would get to hang out with people and chat with people but um, but uh, lately I just kept like wondering if, if I'll be alone in the live stream again and if I'll just sit quietly there by myself and will anyone come there and when it comes to that it's it's not fun anymore so but yeah that's that um, so I still need to scan my sketchbook today I have to post the new sketchbook diary entry for my patrons I I, it's a bit late already, but yeah, I still need to do that. I would also, I should also uh, wash uh, some dishes, but it's already 8 p.m. So uh, maybe tomorrow before comic comic stuff. So yeah, I guess I've talked enough for today. Yeah. See you in the next clip, maybe. really vlogged this month. Uh, I haven't really felt like it, but there's nothing really happening, so it's it's nothing. Um, I've just been working on my webcomics. The witch store takes a lot of time, <laughs> uh, as usual, and transfusions and uh, this week I 
try to finish um, this one project that I don't really want to talk about yet. We'll see how it goes. So that's that. We have a D&D game this evening. So before going, I thought I would talk um, a little bit about the comic that I read this month. I don't know, is this like a comics corner or something? Um, should I make it a thing? Uh, I don't know. So I finally read uh, this thing last week, uh, Our Dreams of Dusk. Um, it says Shimanami Tasogara. Is, is that the, like the Japanese title? Because then there's also a story and art by Yugi Kamatani. So it's about this this boy. What is it? His name? Uh, Tasuku. And he's gay. And he's kind of afraid that uh, he's been outed at school. And and he thinks about killing himself. But. Um, then he he doesn't, <laughs> which is a good thing. Uh, instead, he meets this uh, this woman who is called just uh, someone's son, so no one knows her name. And uh, he goes to this house and meets other people who just hang out there. Uh, it's just like an open place where people can go hang out and he meets other people who who also are queer and yeah what should i say i really like the art the art style is really beautiful and the atmosphere in this comic is really beautiful as well um there are some kind of extreme expressions that i don't really. Hmm. They they are a bit. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't don't really like them. But that's just my preference. The someone son, the woman is supposed to be like this mysterious and cool person, um, and yeah, she is. But I also kind of find her um, a bit annoying <laughs> because she also she's like yes yeah, you can talk to me but I won't listen and you have like uh, until I finish this this ice cream or popsicle or whatever to talk to me and then I will leave and it's kind of uh, it's annoying <laughs> But I don't know. But also, she is maybe kind of like altruistic. Um, so I have mixed feelings. Uh, the thing I like about this comic is or manga is that um, it depicts what it is to be a gay in a Japanese society more realistically uh, if you compare to like your everyday BL um, which is just um, focuses more on the romance and that that can sometimes be like I don't know <laughs> I have like trouble finding words today it seems but this feels more realistic. They talk about the fears they have when it comes to like other people reacting to their sexuality and stuff. Um, it makes you think like how things are still different in Japan and places like Japan compared to to Finland, for example, where like LGBT plus people still experience hate and all that 
here as well but there are also like things that, that are more easier for people here for example so yeah it makes you think even though I'm still um, hopeless uh, romantic or what was the right word? Um, I like romance stories and I'm like sucker for, for that. But um, these kind of stories also are really important to be published. Like if you have just read uh, like a, a BL or, or Yuri manga from Japan, you might have like a certain kind of fluffy image of what it's like to be gay in Japan and this is kind of like a like wake up <laughs> for those kind of readers like no it's it can be really hard um, and dangerous even to be a queer person especially a young young one in Japan so all in all I really like this this comic um, this is the first volume I see there are like several volumes following this so yeah I will have to buy the other volumes at some point um, but yeah that's my thoughts on this our dreams at dusk I do recommend it especially if you have only read like BL <laughs> or just if you are like a, a queer person and you want more more stories about that perspective oh, my brain is is shutting down I don't know that's it Oh, Jesus, oh, I really should, maybe, if I'm gonna make this comic corners <laughs> a thing, I, I should probably um, prepare a bit better. I This time I actually made notes, so, but yeah, are these, what I'm babbling, helpful at all? I don't know. But yeah, that's 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 for now. Okay, hi. It's Friday, the thirty first, the last day of January, and I'm about to leave and go see my friend and her sister and we're gonna go eat some Japanese food and then I will go see Frozen 2 finally I would, would have liked to see the Sami language dub but I was in Lapland uh, when, when they were showing it here so I couldn't see it so I'm just gonna see the original English version um, but I'm really excited to see what the Sami um, inspiration kind of is in the movie. Otherwise, I'm not really interested in uh, giving money to Disney, but whatever. Anyway, I after the D&D uh, game last night, I forgot to film anything, but um, after the game, I managed to go pick my um, book order, books I ordered from Book Depository and uh, let me show you those before I leave. Okay, so this is the first one. Um, I've been really excited to get this. Uh, this is the Way of the House Husband manga by Kosuke Ono. You might have seen this online already, um, some bits of it. But if you are not familiar with this, this is a uh, about a Yakuza, uh, like a former member of Yakuza, uh, who, a guy who becomes a house husband and he does all these 
kind of gangster things, but it's just really funny and wholesome. Um, yeah, I will probably read this soon and talk more about it uh, in the next vlog, so look forward to that. And the next thing, it's not a comic, but it's this photography book. Um, it's really big. <laughs> I've had this on my wish list for a while now, so I finally thought I would treat myself. This is the red-blooded American male um, photographs by Robert uh, Trachtenberg. Anyway, um, it has all these great, great, great photographs. Um, there are a lot of like, um, uh, like well-known people, Ooh, Logan Paul. <laughs> great photo, but uh, uh, the person itself. Anyway, um, they're really, really nice photos. Mostly, as the title says, um, men and just gorgeous photographs. Jewelry. Dogos. <laughs> yeah, let, let me see if I can find um, some great ones. This is this is really nice. <laughs> uh, Adam Lambert. This is one of my favorites. Um, you have probably seen this online at some point. This is really great. <laughs> so, yeah. Now I have this and now I have to somehow find some space in my bookshelf or somewhere else. Uh, just where to put this. Ugh. Oh dear. But yeah, that's that's that. Um, I still have some other comic books that I ordered, but they're still on the way. Um, I'll hopefully get them soon next. <sighs> Hi again. It's actually January. 1st of January, uh, Saturday. Um, so before I start actually editing my January vlog, well, I'm already doing it. But after, before finishing it, I um, received some last minute questions for, from my patrons. So let's go through those now. I was thinking like, uh, do I want to put on makeup? just to film the Q&A, but I received a, a message that my my new headphones are ready to be picked up. So I'll be doing that some some at some point today. And yeah, I don't wanna go outside without at least drawing my eyebrows on, so here we go. But the questions. Uh, Violent Orchid asked, uh, what's your favorite recipe? and where would you like to travel? I don't really have that many recipes. <laughs> My favorite favorite is probably uh, the microwave mug cake recipe that I got from my friend. Um, it's quick and easy and just if you really need a uh, some chocolate or whatever sweet you can just make the microwave mug cake in a few minutes also the three ingredients nutella brownie white thing uh, recipe but you need to have nutella for it so if you have nutella then it's it's quick and easy <laughs> but so that's that's uh, really my recipes chocolate things um where would i like to travel i would really like to go back to japan i was there as a 
exchange student um, 10 years ago. Oh god. I, I was in uh, uh, Asahikawa, Hokkaido for six months. Um, but yeah, I would really like to go there uh, to Japan. I would like to also visit Hokkaido again, but like Tokyo. Tokyo mostly just eat everything and buy all the stickers and uh, art supplies and yes. Um, besides that, I don't really have I don't really have any other places that I would really like to go. I mean, I'm sure, I would like to see like maybe New York or something at some point, but I'm also super terrified to go to uh, USA, so <laughs> I don't know if that'll ever happen. I would also like to go to London. Um, maybe like Austria. But I don't know, Japan is my main main uh, thing at the moment. Then uh, Carolina asks uh, uh, which dark question is performing magic tied only to witches, mages or, ga uh, or can anyone learn it? Uh, could Katarina learn for example? Only like people who are more adept to using uh, magic can use magic. magic. <laughs> so you, you have to be more, I don't know, adapt to use it. You can like learn spells and how to make potions, but you also need to be connected to the magic, to, to the magic, to actually make them work. So, yeah, there's a dog outside. <laughs> so that's, yeah, only like witches can, can actually do anything with magic. So Katarina can't, can't use, use it. And Carolina has a um, second question. Will Katarina get to bet on that pack, bag of coffee eventually? Wink, wink. Um, We'll see. Spoilers. I don't want to spoil it. Karolina <laughs> uh, has a general question. How different is the way you create the plot or story between transfusions and the witch door? Um, considering that witch door has so much more, I guess, background info needed than transfusions and the years, years more of experience you have. This is really tricky question. <laughs> there isn't maybe there aren't like many differences between uh, how I do the comics. Of course, uh, the witch store has more lore and world building uh, because it has uh, an entire fantasy element to it and to the besides the like human world the this world and with transfusions i only have like the vampire lore that i have in here so there are some some things that i really need to think more about when it comes to the witch door i i could do <laughs> better job at it i'm i'm so not like really lazy, but kind of a slacker when it comes to writing a comic. It's mainly just in my head and then I try to write some of it down at least before I draw draw the comic pages. With bo both comics the, the story, the plot is mainly just in my head. <laughs> So, so, not so different. I just do a bit more research with the witch doll. Then I have one comment 
one ask or question in the messages so I don't know if if this person wants me to tell who they are but the question is anyway um, as someone who has a comic in mind but is too scared to start it I'm just wondering if you were scared at first to release your comic into the world my fear is criticism about my art style I'm just wondering if you had any fear in the beginning <clears throat> Um, with transfusions, not really. Um, I had been drawing and posting stuff online, mainly on DeviantArt at that point, uh, for for quite some time, and I had a following there, like relatively big following, and people really liked my art already, so I wasn't really. Um, afraid to start the comic. I was just really eager to get to finally draw it when when I did. My fear is criticism about my art style. I I did have like some criticism for like um, single specific things um, but I, I was kind of arrogant and I, I was like whatever <laughs> um but there will be always people who don't like your art style but if you like it then just go with it like i would advise to study more about the narrative uh, aspects of comics and how to make it easier to read oh god my hair just focus on how the story is going in the comic and how how easy it is to read the comic um, I see sometimes I see comics web comics that are the art is like good but then uh, they are kind of difficult to follow um, either their rhythm is kind of weird or it's difficult to follow which um, panel to go to next or if the font is unreadable or if it's just really hard to tell what is happening in the panels so I would recommend reading uh, the Scott McCloud books Understanding Comics and Making Comics um, those are really good to like figuring out how to tell how to tell a story in a comic format. So Scott McCloud, look it up if you haven't already read those books. There are probably some other other books as well, but those are kind of the classic. Um, a comic making bible <laughs> understanding comics so yeah if you have doubts about your art style um, then maybe make a few pages of of your comic or like um kind of like mock-up pages and share them with either with your uh, people who follow follow you on like wherever Tom, Tumblr, Twitch, Instagram, and ask for their opinion, or with your friends or someone who you trust, um, and ask if they would want you to change anything. Or but otherwise, with web comics, if you just do it for fun, um, don't be too afraid just do what you want do what you love do what you just do what you want to do it's that simple you want to tell your story and you do it with the skills that you have and that's that's really it okay one more question I, this was also f from my messages so i don't know if they want uh, me to mention the name but 
Yeah. The question is, um, in regards to writing the storyline of transfusions, how do you build up uh, Joa and Dulan's relationship from en enemy to lovers without dragging it out or adding it in too much filler? Uh, I'm trying to write a drama uh, sh slash slice of life. <laughs> uh, my English. A uh, classic way of writing, not a webcomic at the moment. And I don't know how to get them from friends to lovers without putting in a billion boring scenes. Any tips or advice advice would be amazingly helpful. Um, when I started Transfusions, I wanted to avoid all the tropes of like romance, drama, stories and be in like uh, Jojo comics or BL comics and like web comics that were happening at that point in like two, 2010 so uh, we have come a long way since then but during that time the stories were had really similar pattern with like lots of misunderstandings and all that <laughs> Just just the characters running in circles and all this this like not communicating and and jumping into bed like or or just jumping into bed uh, with each other yeah. instantly and I wanted to do something different with transfusions. At the same time I wanted the readers to have to wait like a long time before the characters uh, have sex actually <laughs> but i also wanted to avoid all the the miscommunication drama well to avoid the the continuous uh, miscommunication drama <laughs> circling I made the characters realize relatively quickly that they're they are into each other. Like um, Yoas' attraction to Dulan happened quite kind of like instantly. Like he just notices Dulan's cute smile and he's like, "Damn, that's that's really cute." And he's like, "Oh no, what <laughs> what was that thought?" Yeah. Then things happen. After that, things happen relatively quickly. Dulan realizes pretty soon after that that Dula, uh, Joa is acting a bit weird. And yeah, he's a smart boy <laughs> sometimes. Afterwards, I have uh, kind of thought that I could have made the, what do you call it, pining? Have that. Uh, a bit more screen time, so to, so to speak. Uh, a lot of people like the, that stuff. <laughs> people, uh, characters just mutually pining for each other. Um, but yeah, I really wanted to skip all that, that when characters just come to conclusions without speaking to each other. That's why the Johan Dulan kind of move fast, really fast in that at that point. I would say just make your characters smart and make them talk with each other and skip all that all that part where, where they are just thinking to themselves like if does he like me? Maybe he doesn't. What if he feels like this and what if he doesn't feel like that and and they just go on with that forever and not talk to each other. I think people nowadays kind of like appreciate more um, when characters communicate. That's that's my advice. <laughs> um, when I said I wanted to like prolong the uh, story like until they 
finally have sex. Uh, that's what I did was that Dylan, um, he's really like inexperienced, so he was kind of afraid of ha actually having sex. So, so I gave him a lot of time to um, come in terms with his sexuality and what he's comf comfortable doing and when he's ready. So that's how, how I did uh, that part of the story. Hmm. Do I want to say anything else? I don't know. I just... <sighs> hmm. Yeah, just have the characters communicate with each other. I'm j I was just so tired with with characters who are who are like <laughs> dumb and and uh, jump into ridiculous conclusions by themselves and when they could just save time and ask the the, the other person what they what they think and how they how they feel practicality <laughs> Um, that's that's the key, I, I guess, like a balance between the pining and practicality. <laughs> I guess you have to find that. I guess that's all. I hope this was helpful at some some way, a, a little bit at least. Um, but yeah, thanks for the questions to my patrons, and thank thank you for the support. I have. All the links down below if you want to become a patron or something else. Um, so that's it. Thanks for watching this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, give it a thumbs up or something. And if you want to see more videos from me, uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.